Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita fillah This is advice as it was asked from some of our sisters in the Netherlands And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of our sisters With ikhlas, with thabat And ilm al-nafiya, ruskan tayyibu, amal al And bless the Muslims in general, ameen ya rabbil alameen And the question was asked for some general advice Regarding seeking knowledge and practicing their Islam uh, in their various localities. And first I would say, first and foremost, it's very important for all Muslims to have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have ikhlas lillah azza wa jal. And this is an important aspect, if not uh, a great part of tawheed, of sincere, of true tawheed, and they were not commanded except to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with sincerity. So we know that sincerity, that our deen, in order to have our deeds accepted by Allah azza wa jal, that we need to be sincere to Him. Sincere to Him in by having ikhlas and worshiping Him in Him alone. So that means also, that brings up the second point, is that we, uh, I would encourage all of us to seek knowledge, to seek knowledge to the extent of our ability, uh, seek knowledge in the language that you're able to comprehend it in. If, if you're uh, from France, perhaps maybe French is your mother tongue and that's easiest for you to understand. Uh, if you're in Amsterdam then uh, or Holland, then you... Uh, would understand it in, in Dutch. So, uh, or if you're in Denmark, you know, in uh, Danish. So, it's very important that you seek knowledge and knowledge of Tawheed. Tawheed al uluhiya Tawheed al Rububiya, Tawheed al Asma'i wa Sifat. Knowing uh, the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, understanding them to the extent of your ability and seeking knowledge about how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone uh, al uluhiya Tawheed al-Ibadah and Tawheed al rububiya knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your Lord and the Creator and the Sustainer all of this, this study of Tawheed actualizes Tawheed it makes it so it's not just something which is symbolic or something which is just abstract but rather that Tawheed needs to be implemented in our lives in order to make tawakkal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in order to strengthen our iman to come closer to Allah azza wa jal. So knowledge of, uh, of tawheed, knowledge of uh, something from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, and knowledge of adab and manners, because our all of us are in need of practicing uh, correct Adab, <clears throat> as uh, the Salaf used to used to um, uh, seek, you know, uh, learn manners before they sought knowledge. So some of the Salaf they really focus, and if you look at a lot of the classical books of the Salaf, you'll see that they emphasize. There's so many books and treatises that uh, the great Imams and statements of the Salaf regarding adab, you know, manners, how to interact with one another, the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the haq of the creation, how to interact, how to be good with people, how to speak uh, properly, how to conduct oneself as a Muslim. That's very important. And the Prophet ﷺ said, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْقُلُ فِي مَيْزَانُ مُؤْمِنْ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَ مِنْ حُسْنُ خُلْقِ وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبْغِضُ الْفَائِشَ الْبِرِي There isn't, an escape, uh, there isn't a thing which weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than good manners. And verily Allah hates uh, wickedness, you know, zina and these kind of things, uh, and, and sinful speech. So that comes from adab. You know, that comes from having proper manners uh, and and good 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 manners with rea with interacting with other people, and that is a part of that's heavy on your scale as a believer, and likewise Allah hates. So that shows us the sifa of hating that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala hates certain things and He hates wicked speech and conduct. 
So that shows us that that is the methodology of the Salaf. That's what we need to focus on is getting ourselves, our hearts <clears throat> clean, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So knowing the sunnah, the only way you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly is through ilm. And ilm of the sunnah, ilm of kitab, ilm of sunnah. So those are and uh, in, in implementing those righteous manners. Also, this is all a part of your menhaj, your methodology of practice, your methodology of understanding, and the methodology of da'wah. So stay away from groups and sects. Stay away from things which divide us from the main body of Muslims, which is Ahlul Sunnati wa Jama'ah. Keep away from those things and those practices and those ideologies. Keep away from the people of Takfir because I know Europe has a big problem, especially uh, you know, many parts of Europe, that they have a big problem with uh, Takfir and Takfiris there, uh, and especially in some of the Norwegian or Scandinavian countries. So it's very important to be with Ahl Sunnah. Be with those who will call into the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, finding good sisters and good uh, study circles. Also, make sure you're not just sitting in circles where you're just talking about people. So, again, stay away from backbiting and uh, slandering people. And this goes back to the good manners. And because those are the, some of the reasons of punishment of the grave. The Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, uh, or مَرَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَلَى قَبَرَيْنِ فَقَالْ إِنَّهُمْ لِيُعَذِّبَانِ وَمَا يُعَذِّبَانِ فِي كَبِيرٍ أَمَّا أَحَدُهُمَ فَالْكَانَ لَا يَسْتَذْرُ مِنْ الْبَوْلِ وَأَمَّا الْآخِرُ فَكَانَ يَمْشِ بِالْنَّمِيمَةِ The Prophet ﷺ said, uh, he, was, he was walking by two graves, and there were graves in another area of, of some Yahud. And he said, verily they're being punished in the grave. And they're not being punished for something which the people think is great. And then he said, as for one of them, they used to not clean themselves properly when they urinated, you know, making a stinja or, or they used to get urine or uh, those kind of um, uh, filth on their garments. And then he said, and the other one, they used to spread wickedness around the community. You know, they used to spread tales of wickedness around the community. So, for example, if you hear so-and-so, you know, who's a dai or something, and you want to speak about them, even if it may be something, uh, it could be true, and it could be a misunderstanding or whatever, but you are spreading it just for for the sake of getting into more more controversy. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all for these sins. Ameen. Because it's so easy to do. Or speaking about the Muslim rulers, or whatever the case may be, speaking when there's no fa'idah, when there's no benefit. So it's very important, my point being, is to sit in good circles. Sit, it'd be better to sit for 30 minutes uh, a day with a sister that's teaching you how to read the Qur'an than it is to sit with 20 sisters that were niqab and claim to be Salafi, or they might be Salafi, but they're, all they're doing is backbiting and, and attacking people. That's not the gathering. You want to be in the company, as the Prophet وسلم, said and mentioned, that you want to leave those things. Uh, uh, you know, leave those doubtful uh, things. You know, uh, you know, leave those leave uh, doubtful things for that which is certain, and leave doubtfulness for that which is the truth and good. You know, and leave. And leave those things, as the Messenger وسلم, said, leave those things which don't concern you. So backbiting and getting into different affairs and different issues, issues that are way over our head, uh, that, that doesn't have any benefit. You know, that you need to speak about this one. You need to get involved with the da'i. The, the community is split because Sheikh so-and-so and Sheikh so-and-so fell out. Those things are, are not beneficial for you. And you don't need that in the Netherlands. You don't need that in... Uh, you know, wherever you are, the sisters really, we need sisters that are, have good tarbiya and are focused, focused on the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and focusing on being good Muslims and good wives and good mothers and even talibat al-ilm, you know, so that they can teach other sisters and benefit the ummah. So it's very important to be focused on those issues and, and, and be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, purify yourselves, purify your iman, you know, striving in your ibadah, striving to learn uh, the Qur'an and read the Qur'an often 
and if read it and translate it even in your language so that way you can uh, you know to soften the heart and read the sunnah the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and busy yourself with talab al ilm with talab al ilm you know with the, with the, the, the busyness of seeking knowledge and those things are going to be things which are going to help you have, as Imam al-Albani mentioned, the tasfiya wa tarbiya, meaning the, the purification, purification of the soul, and the tarbiya, and the raising, the educative effect. And all of that, you know, nothing comes about except good from those things. That will make you a better Muslim or Muslimah, and it will make you... Uh, you know, have success be in the Allah Ta'ala in this life as well as the hereafter. And so those are some general advice that I can offer. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.